be here. Um, so I'm going to talk uh, about uh, mainly about instanton floor homology. So going back to uh, somehow, you know, there are all kinds of different floor homologies, and P Peter Kronheimer and I sort of started off working on instanton floor homology, and the way uh, life seems to go, sometimes you find that it's a good idea to look at what you did a long time ago and think about it again. There's some interesting, fresh things that, that seem to happen. So, um, so instanton floor homology. So the setting um, is that we're going to look at a, a three-manifold. So usually it'll be uh, closed and oriented. <coughs> um, we're going to pick a, a principal bundle over the three-manifold. And usually we'll just take uh, G to be either SU2 or SO3. And um, in fact, for the moment, let's, let's think about the case of, um, of SU2. So um, there's an interesting function, functional on the space of connections. So recall, um, let's, so for an SU2 bundle, P is necessarily trivial. Uh, and so we can think of a, a connection as the same thing as uh, one form with values in the Lie algebra of SU2. Um, so maybe we'll call that one form little a. Um, and the, the function that we're going to look at is the Chern Simons function. So the Chern Simons of little a, I'm going to write it in two different ways. Uh, it's the integral from 0 to 1 of uh, minus the trace of uh, f a t d t, where uh, a t is just this kind of silly path that goes from the trivial connection, the one coming from our trivialization, to the connection a. Um, writing it like this. Um, connects it to the original definition of the Chern-Simons functional. The Chern-Simons functional is originally introduced by Chern and Simons in the, you know, as, as you hopefully all know, you know Chern-Bay theory. So if you have a connection, you get a, a characteristic, uh, if you have a connection and a, uh, and a homogeneous polynomial uh, on the Lie algebra of the corresponding structure group, then you can get a characteristic class. Of course, the cohomology class doesn't depend on the particular choice of connection. And uh, Chern and Simons looked for a canonical expression for the, for the primitive of the difference. And it, in this form, uh, that's how they wrote it down originally. That's how you see it easily as, as the primitive of, uh, so it comes from the trace of FA, wedge FA. That gives you this expression. But uh, another way of writing it, sorry, then we integrate this over y. So we want to get a, a number. And another way of writing it is the trace of a times um, dA plus 1 third a bracket wedge a. So uh, here, uh, my notation's a tiny bit sloppy. Here I'm going to think of these. Uh, the connection forms, in this case, as matrix-valued one forms. And then uh, here, I mean matrix multiplication uh, and wedge product. Here, I mean using the bracket and the wedge product. So that's, that's, that's how the formulas work. And um, yeah. Um, you, you should never trust my conventions. I, I mean, yeah, probably. Uh, and in, in the notes, there's a half. But um, <laughs> for the purposes of the lecture, <laughs> there's no half. Um, uh, the, the nice, r nice reason for writing it this way is that you, you see what the first variation is with respect to the connection. So if I look at uh, 
d by ds of chern simons of a plus uh, sb at s equals zero, using the first formula you can easily check that that's um, that's got this expression. So, uh, <coughs> and here you see something rather remarkable. The critical points uh, so stationary points for the first variation uh, that's if and only if the curvature of A is zero, i.e. A is flat. <coughs> so um, what, yeah, okay, so critical points are flat connections. Um, now, of course, the Chern-Simons function has a, a large symmetry group, the gauge group. Um, Um, which in this case we can think of as, as maps from my three manifold into SU2. And um, uh, G acts on A by this formula, and uh, it, it nearly preserves the Chern Simons functional, except that it picks up some factor of the degree of the gauge transformation, right? This is a, in this case, it's a map from a three manifold to SU2, which is the three sphere. There's a degree, and this difference picks up the, di picks up a multiple of the degree. So alpha is probably something like four pi squared or eight pi squared, depending on whether I put that half there or not. Anyway, um, all right, so, in particular, uh, Chern Simons descends to a function, which I'll still give the same name to, uh, from space of connections mod gauge to, uh, to the circle uh, R times alpha z. Now, <coughs> so th this is what we would like to do Morse theory for. So, so Floor's amazing contribution was uh, explained how to do Morse theory for Chern-Simons. Now, um, anyway, so for this lecture, we're not going to do too much with that, except I just want to explore this a little bit and get some feeling for what this is supposed to tell us about, about three manifolds. Um, all right, so l let's look at some examples um, to begin with. Um, so, well, <coughs> it's always good to write down the trivial example. If y is S3, then uh, there's only one flat connection uh, up to the G action. Oh, yeah, sorry, I, I forgot to say something important. Need some little bit of notation here. So we ha we're looking at this critical set. So critical set of Chern Simons. That's um, flat connections mod gauge. And it's important to understand that that can be identified with, uh, <coughs> with representations rho of the fundamental group into the structure group mod conjugation. Now, you have to be a tiny bit careful with this equivalence. Um, so in the case of SU2, this is fine. Uh, if for, um, 
So, um, because there's only one principal SU2 bundle up to isomorphism, there may be more than one principal bundle up to isomorphism, and then um, you'd have to, if you pick out your principal bundle, then you have to check that your representation uh, gives rise to the same principal bundle. So, um, you know, so if you have So you note that if you have a um, if you have a row, then you can look at the universal cover uh, of your three manifold times G, divide by pi one via row. So it acts by deck transformations and by row. That's a G bundle over Y, which is has a natural flat connection coming from this product connection. Um, and this bundle doesn't have to be trivial in general. So anyway, so that's a story. Um, and I want to observe that there's already something a little bit interesting going on in the simplest possible case. I mean, it's our next simplest possible case. Suppose y is LPQ, a lens space. So <coughs> pi 1 of y, of course, is z mod pz. Um, and you can use this construction. Uh, well, so you know, representations. Uh, Uh, so a representation from z mod pz to uh, su2, that's just given by picking a generator here and sending it uh, to some uh, p through of unity. But of course, it, this lens space, I mean, there's another parameter q in, in this definition. Um, and you can check that while the space of representations, sorry, I need a notation here. So this is uh, the representations of y into g. And if g is obvious, um, I'll just call it r of y. So um, here, the representation space is, is easy to figure out. It's just these, here's. Uh, up to conjugacy are representations of this form, but you get to switch these guys. So if p is um, if p is odd, they're p minus one over two such representations. The interesting thing is that so the this, the, rep the the representation space itself doesn't notice q, but we have this Chern-Simons function, which you can compute for these representations. And e the image of Chern Simons on the flat connections notices um, n notices the lens space. So um, so. So actually, let, let's say omega is 2 pi. So I'm going to say omega n is this guy. Then you can check that Chern Simons mod pi squared on the corresponding row n is n squared r over p mod 1. I've gotten rid of the made alpha essentially be one here, um, where uh, r is an inverse of q mod p. So, um, so, so to say, you know, although the, the representation spaces are the same uh, as you vary q but fix p, the Chern Simons behavior of the Chern Simons function uh, is, is already interesting. Um, some other examples that will be 
important as we try and develop the story a bit. Uh, <coughs> So let's think for a second about uh, tori. So if I look at uh, say representation of fundamental group of n torus into SU2, that's just um, so rho is specified by choosing choice of uh, n commuting elements. In SU2, um, and um, so, um, so since we're in SU2, they're simu simultaneously diagonalizable, so um, so I, up to conjugacy, uh, I get a bunch of guys like this. Um, uh, up to conjugate, uh, so I can simultaneously diagonalize, diagonalize them, but um, that's still not given me a unique representative. I can simul, I can, uh, it, I can switch these factors. So the representation space of the n torus into SU2, I can identify with S1 to the n mod Z2. Um, and I mean, there's a very, you know, here we're sort of exploiting the fact that uh, SU2 is simply connected. For non-simply connected groups, it's a, there's a very rich and interesting story, which Greg could tell you everything about. Um, uh, it's, it was only one, one case of that that's going to be important for us, um, which is the case, again, of, of SU, SO3. Uh, let's look first. Uh, well, actually, let me say one, one, let me digress one second here. So. So if I have a representation or a connection, but let's think about it from the point of view of representations, a representation into G, then I can ask uh, what is its stabilizer under conjugation. Right. So. <coughs> Um, and it, it's an easy exercise to see that what that is, it, it, it's the kind of essentially by definition commutant of the image of rho. <coughs> now, the, the, um, the groups that can be commutants of other groups in a Lie group, that, that's an, is an interesting story there um, for SU2. So for SU2, it's, there's a, a rather simple list. It's either the trivial element, a circle subgroup, or the whole group. Um, for SO3, there's an interest, it's a richer story. the identity, you can have Z2, that's, this is the non-trivial generator, you can have Z2 times Z2, which we'll call the Klein 4 group, you can have SO2, <coughs> you can have O2, or you can have SO3. So this, for example, is uh, matrices of the form 
two by two matrix A and its determinant, right? And it, you notice it, it, this, this picture exhibits a, a, a nice feature. Um, this kind of graph is self-dual. If you have a look at a representation, look what its image is, then its commutant is the guy over here. So the stuff that commutes with this is a Z2, which is this Z2. Right? These guys are their own commutants. And these guys are commutants of each other. So <coughs> um, that tells you that there's another um, you know, so if we're looking at representations of the fundamental group of, say, the two torus for the moment into SO3, <coughs> one possibility is that they're already the ones we saw coming from SU2, where their image is in uh, SO2 subgroup. Another possibility, however, is that they lie in here. So there's, there, there's a representation, K4, from pi 1 of the two torus into K4 sitting inside uh, sitting inside SO3, and it's stabilizer is K4. Now, <coughs> uh, to explain some of, some of the other things that we're going to do, uh, let's stare at this example a tiny bit more, uh, take another point of view on it. So, from SU2 of this example. So <coughs> um, what, uh, what do I want to say? Yeah. So um, of course, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at, at the punctured torus, take a point P, of course, pi 1 of T2 minus P is a free group. Um, but this, you know, if I pick a generator's, pick my, pick my base point, pick a generator X, and another generator Y, then the loop that just goes around P is the, is the commutator. Right, so, um, Call this loop gamma. Gamma is equal to, depending on how I chose things, is the commutator. Now, <coughs> um, what I can look for instead, instead of SO3 representations, um, <coughs> uh, I can look for representations rho of pi 1 of the punctured torus to SU2, but <coughs> so, but with the property that rho of gamma is minus the identity. Now, if you think about it, SU2 mod plus or minus the identity is isomorphic to SO3. So this is picking up some kind of SO3 representations. Uh, but if I set, um, so let me call this R0 of T2 minus R0 of T2 and P, SU2. Um, <coughs> that's this set of representations. Uh, SU2 acts by conjugacy. Still. Um, and <coughs> now uh, acts by conjugacy, but it, it turns out it acts freely. And in fact, here an, an example of, so we, we had this row K4. There's a. Uh, I'm going to call it rho h from pi 1 of t2 minus p to su2, which sends x 
to the quaternion i, y to the quaternion j, and then you can check that the part of the commutators of these guys is minus one, gives you an element here, and uh, exercises see that this is this is the unique. wrap up to conjugacy. So <laughs> just to say, you know, it, if we were looking at this, at, at these representations uh, into SO3, um, there's a very nice, interesting representation who, with image the Klein-4 group. That's great, but it, it has a non-trivial stabilizer, which is a bit annoying. But if I look at it from this point of view, kind of, uh, look at it, try to look at it as an SU2 gadget, but with a, a bit of a singularity, um, it, it gets much better. Yes? So they can also do some things like what is this <laughs> rho? Rho sub h for quaternions. Uh, what is this a? A y goes to? Y goes to j. So th these are the quaternions i and j. Okay. Yeah. So I, I, remember that SU2 is the same as, as sp1. The three sphere, I can think of it as the three sphere in the unit quaternions. And, um, you know, so, um, sorry. Um, anyway, just, <coughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, let me introduce another bit of notation then. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, let's set uh, R of T2 P mod SU2, that's sorry, R0, that's just R of T2 P. <coughs> um, and the, the exercise is that this is a point. There's a unique guy like that with trivial stabilizer. OK. Um, and Another exercise for you. So we can, well, sorry. It'll be useful to generalize this. So a little higher level view of what we did. We took, we took an SU2 bundle, sorry, we took it really an SO3 bundle, and we tried to lift it to an SU2 bundle. We failed at one point in this case. And, um, but, uh, in doing so, we can still study representations uh, successfully. And what that point represents is the second Stiefel-Whitney class of that SO3 bundle. So we can generalize this picture in a way that, that turns out to be useful for technical reasons. Uh, I mean, for trying to make some of the gadgets that we're going to construct into functors. It turns out to be useful to to generalize this picture to three manifolds. So we're going to look at SO3 bundles, but we're always going to look at them, try to think of them as SU2 bundles. And the way we do it is we pick a particular representative of W2, a curve. So we choose uh, gamma in Y3, a closed curve. It might be null homologous. Um, <coughs> and consider, uh, well, first R0 of y and gamma, that's representations rho of pi 1 of y to SU2, so that rho of, so, sorry, rho of mu is minus the identity. Uh, and here I need a picture to explain what I mean. So the, the generalization of the, the picture we had of the torus is, uh, well, yeah, let's imagine our three manifold, something like the three torus. We take some curve gamma. Maybe it's interesting, maybe not, whatever. This is gamma. <coughs> and we pick our base point, and what Mu is, is some kind of meridional curve, any meridional curve. So these are OK. 
okay? And then I can also set this to be the quotient space. Anyway, so, um, am I doing? Okay. It need not be free in general, yeah, but it makes it a little freer. That's. Sorry, what's that word out there in close group? Close, close consider. Yeah. Okay. All right. And, uh, yeah, lovely, good. Okay. Got that. Ah, right. Then the, the next exercise is that R of T2 uh, times S1, uh, point times S1, so the three torus, and I just take the product of the previous picture with the circle, uh, this is now two points. I mean, a sort of elementary exercise to make sure you understand the definitions. All right. Um, so um, I'm going to give you some a little bit richer family of examples, uh, which is a beautiful computation due to Fintuchel and Stern. Um, so these are ciphered fiber spaces. Uh, <coughs> so remember, so we're going to just look at the kind of basic example, examples of rescore examples. So on the one hand, that's um, uh, the, it's the link of the singularity Z to the P, Z1 to the P, Q, Z2 to the Q, Z3 to the R equals zero, intersected with the five sphere. So here it, here it is. There's S5, V6. That's this zero set. Um, here and sigma PQR is here. Um, so it turns out that if if PQ and R are, are uh, co pairwise co prime. Then uh, 